DreAllDay.com. Hey, what's up, buddy? This is Jacob Hiller with DreAllDay.com, and I am from JumpManual.com. Um, a lot of people don't have access to a weight room, or they don't have uh, time, or they don't feel like they have time to get in a proper workout. So, in this little uh, demonstration, uh, I want to present one of three very good exercises you can use uh, to jump higher. And in this particular exercise, we're going to address strength. Because if you don't have the proper strength base, your body feels heavy to you. So the stronger your legs are, the lighter your body is in relation to your strength and the more explosive you can be. So this exercise is going to help you become more strong and become more explosive. But before we get into this, I want to talk about some limitations that some of you might have when you do this. Uh, so one thing that some of you guys might run into, and by the way, the name of the exercise is the pistol squat or the single leg squat. So what we're going to be doing is using one leg to squat. And obviously if you're a very new athlete, very new jumper, uh, simply doing a squat without any weight is going to be difficult for you. So you can start with that. But for some of you, um, you're, you don't have any, you have some degree of strength base and you're ready to start doing a single leg squat. Let me just demonstrate the exercise and then I can demonstrate some problems and ways to overcome those problems. So the way this works is you will go stand on one foot and you will go all the way down to here and then you will go back up. So that is what a single leg squat is. It's actually kind of difficult and some things can happen. If you have poor flexibility in your hamstrings, you will go down and this poor flexibility will pull your torso backwards and you will fall backwards. The other thing is if you have poor flexibility uh, in the back of your legs, in your Achilles tendon, uh, in your calves, uh, also you will get down to here and because you can't, you don't have proper dorsiflexion, meaning this angle can't be very tight, it will make you fall backwards. So let me introduce to you a small crutch if my wire will let me go there. Okay, so here's a crutch. Uh, if this is a problem you're having, you're falling backwards, you can put a book on your heel and this will lean you slightly forward so that when you go down, you're not feeling like you're going to fall backwards. So that's one thing you can do. The other thing you can do is start getting better flexibility. So the really pretty simple drills for your hamstrings and for your calf and your ankle. So this is what you would do for your hamstrings. I mean, very simple um, is, is a hamstring stretch. You can go down, try and hold it. Don't go down extremely fast. Don't bounce extremely violently. Not necessarily bad to have some bounce in it, but you don't want to be getting some crazy bounce up in the club. So avoid that. As for your dorsiflexion, if you can put your foot against a structure like this, and bend it forward and try and increase the angle, decrease the distance between your toe and your shin. It's called dorsiflexion. The more you're able to do that, uh, the more comfortable you're, well, you're going to feel in this position. Once you're able to just come down here, you can practice by doing this. I like to hold on my toe to keep my body bended forward. So. You can practice doing that with both legs. So that uh, is the beginning. Now I showed you a very difficult version of this exercise. However, if you're not able to do that, you can start by sitting down and going back up and then slowly uh, going down further and further. So you can use a chair, a stool, uh, anything. So some of you are now saying, this is way too easy. I can do 25 of these, etc., etc. So, get yourself something like this, full of water. Do it. I would recommend holding it out in front of you. I used to put my wife on my back and do the squats when I didn't have anything, or I'd fill uh, my luggage bag full of stuff. If you have bands, you can step on a band, put it over your head, and then you can go down. So you can get this, uh, the great effect of the band which has many benefits which could uh, we could go over in another video so you get the effect of the band uh, 
And the last thing that's very easy is you could fill your backpack full of books. And then I'd recommend you put it in front, not in back. Put it in back, you might fall backwards again. You could go down. So uh, these are all exercises you can do off one leg. And this is going to build your strength, particularly in your quads. It's also going to build your stability uh, because you're forced to be stable. A few things you want to note for safety is you want your knees and your toes to be going in the same direction. If your knee is going that way and your toes are going that way, you're going down, it's not going to be good for your joint. Uh, so if you need to, you know, you could hold on to a pole or hold on to something or a person or anything or a door frame, for example. You can hold on to something and go down and use it to stabilize yourself. Um, also, you just want to be real careful when you're down in this bottom position uh, that you're not moving your knee and there's not much wiggling going on. One thing you can do is videotape yourself like this, go down, and then you can see if you're wobbling. You don't want to wobble at all. And as you do this exercises, uh, your legs are going to get a lot of stability. They're going to resist torque when you uh, go off your jump. So when you go off, uh, whereas before your, your leg might have had a tendency to buckle or torque, you're going to feel very stable off your legs. So this is going to help you for your single leg jump. It's going to help you for your double leg jump. It's going to help you resist injury and just going to make you stronger and more stable overall. This is the first exercise that I wanted to show you. In the next video, uh, which will be soon, I'm going to show you a more explosive exercise. So this is going to help you with your strength and then we're going to use this strength and make sure it gets converted into explosive strength or strength that you can use given a very short period of time. As you know, the vertical leap takes about a quarter of a second. So uh, we've got to be able to use that strength very quickly. So thank you very much, and remember, work on your game. You watched me work on my game, now it's time to work on yours. The Hoop Handbook is a series of workout programs straight from my own personal experience working out and training on every aspect of basketball. Ball handling, shooting, scoring moves, scoring over bigger defenders, the crossover, post moves, your weak hand, off the court training, dunking, vertical, all of this covered. All you got to do is follow the program step by step, the hoop handbook. And as he comes back to your right, you just reach the ball right over his head and finish the shot.